In this video, we're going to continue our journey into exploring Jira work management. And today's super quick video is going to walk you through the steps of adding new columns to a team managed Jira work management project. Now, this is a very easy thing to do, but I'm going to give you some best practices for how you should be thinking about adding columns to your project as it's not the exact same thing as when you're adding a column to like a Jira software project or a Jira service management project. Jira work management is designed for non-technical teams and you have a lot more creativity and a lot more freedom when it comes to naming your columns. So we'll show you how to do that and also talk about some of the best practices there. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down below. As you can see, my merch store, my paid courses, and the links to my sponsors so you can start free trials of their apps down there. Now, let's jump into Jira Work Management and talk about how to add columns. Don't want to sleep in because I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. So inside of Jira work management, you want to be in the board setting. This is not really going to work if you're like in the list view or timeline view. You definitely want to be in the board setting as this is going to be probably the only place that I was able to find that is going to enable you to do this. Now out of the box, your Jira work management project should ship with a couple of existing statuses. So you have a couple of options. You can either rename as you can see here, rename an existing status or you can delete it. And the final step is that you can actually add more statuses by clicking on this plus button. So let's talk about all three and let me tell you why you would consider one over the other. So let's start off by clicking on this ellipsis and talking about renaming. When you rename a status, you want to essentially do that if you just want to be a little bit what I what I feel is a little bit more efficient, right? Because you already have some existing columns rather than deleting them, clicking on the plus button and adding more. You're just simply going to take what's already there and just going to rebrand it. So I really like this method because it just encourages you to not be uh, digitally wasteful, right? You're not going to be deleting or or recreating something that you don't need to because you already have a column there. All you got to do is give it a new title. So I like doing the renaming, especially just to, again, just to save a couple of clicks. Now, if you're really absolutely sure that you're like, hey, I don't want to rename it. I just want to start with a clean slate. Well, then maybe you want to delete it. So that's when you're going to want to hit this delete button here. But keep in mind that once you delete something inside of Jira, it's gone. It's gone forever. And also when you do hit this delete button, it is going to ask you, hey, so we're deleting the status. What status should I move to? So you're going to want to have a good answer there, or you're going to want to make sure you pre add new columns so that when you do the deletion, it now has the new place to land. So a couple of things that you want to take into consideration there when you're going to be deleting existing columns. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well maintained, optimized and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool optimizer for Jira to audit and configure, clean up and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. Now let's talk about the third and final option. When you just, let's just say you want to add new columns. All you got to do is click on this plus button here and then start typing away. Now, here's where I want to take a little second here to kind of explain to you what should you put in here? Because as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Jira work management projects are a little bit more for non-technical teams. And you don't need to follow the exact rigor of like to do and progress and done and like set up for development and peer review and code review and all those very technical statuses that are enabled in a Jira software project. For a Jira work management, you might want to just do things that are a little bit more natural. For example, my son right now is being homeschooled and we use Jira work management to help keep him organized so he knows what homework, what tasks he needs to be working on at any given point and most importantly so that he knows the due dates of when things are done. This gives my son some autonomy so that he can be self-organizing and it gives the parents, us, the ability to kind of oversee what's going on and let him move things around his board but we can also come in and put some pressure if we see that things are not moving. But naturally, the to-do in progress and done, while helpful, might not be intuitive enough 
for an 11 year old. So instead, what we typically do in our environment, right, is we have like, instead of to do, we rename ours to do today, right? So it's things that he needs to be working on today. So this is his priority list for the day, right? Then we have another column that says like, do this week. And so these items are things that if he finishes whatever he's working on today, he's gonna wanna start working on these items that are due this week. We also have items that are like due next week. So as you can see, I'm able to add another status of due this week. And then finally, let's just say that we wanna track everything that's due this month. But rather than me clicking the plus button here to show you how to add the column, let me show you a different way of being able to add columns to Jira that it's probably a little bit more visual so you understand how these work. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on project settings here, and then we're gonna click on issue types here on the left. Once you're here, you're going to very subtly, cause it's kind of hidden, you won't see it unless you're looking, right? But you have an edit workflow button here, and so we're gonna click on this edit workflow, and that's gonna pull up our edit workflow. Now what's cool about this edit workflow is that you get a little bit more of a visualization of as to how these things play out, and all you gotta do is click on this add to do status, in progress or done status, whatever you wanna do here. And I'm gonna simply add an in progress status and I'm gonna type in do this month and then click on add. And that's gonna basically add it here into my workflow. Now, if I wanted to in this view, I could also remove this any status item that allows you to transition from any status to any other status. So you can just simply click that checkbox. Or you can, if you wanted to get much more granular, add a transition from one bubble. So you just click on this bubble here and you drag it over to the next bubble and then you can give it a name so that you have transitions. Now this again is a little bit more advanced. It's very much exactly the same thing that you can do in your software. But for, for non-technical teams, like even like my son's homeschooling, I don't recommend you add transitions. I just rather you just be able to move things every which way you need to go because you might wanna get ahead and because if you don't put online, like let's just say I wanted to jump ahead and work on things that are due this month and bring them down for due today or working on today, I wouldn't be able to do that if there is no direct transition from here to here. But because I'm using the any status transitions, I can bring these in from anywhere and it's not gonna be a problem. So I would rather you leave it like this, but if you wanna be a little, more, a little bit more advanced, you definitely have the option to add your transitions and explicitly call out your path. Now, once you're done adding your transitions here, all you're gonna do is hit update workflow, apply which issue types should get this workflow. In this case, I want it for all of them. And then you're just simply gonna hit save. Click this little X here in the top left corner to get out of there. And then click on board again. And you'll notice that my do this month is in here, but it's in the wrong order. So all I gotta do now is just pop it over here and pop this one over here because now they're in the right order. And that's it. So that's essentially how you add these issues. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well-maintained, optimized, and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool, Optimizer for Jira, to audit and configure, clean up, and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip-top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. Now the only drawback, the only, what I call the con, the, the, the only in part that I don't like about Jira work management at Atlassian, I think this would be cool if you can get this updated, is in like a tool like Trello, you have a create button in each of these. So you could, in theory, just go to do this month and start adding the items that are due this month. But in Jira work management, we don't have that luxury. So you unfortunately either have to hit the create button here, type something in like uh, turn in book report, hit enter, and then move it to do next week, right? To put it into the right status. Or when you're hitting the create button up here, you're able to again, create the task. And then once you create the task, you're gonna hit create, and then you'll be able to drag and drop. So those are the two ways you can get it in there. But Atlassian, two, feature recommendations that I would have for you is when you hit the create button, it'd be cool if we have the status field. For example, if I switch over to a, a Jira software project, you'll notice that I have a status column here and I can actually change statuses from the moment of creation. So that would be a cool add here. Or if it's easier for you at Atlassian, add my create buttons down here. So it feels a little bit more like Trello and I'm able to add items as I need it, wherever I need it. So. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well-maintained, optimized, and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? 
Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool Optimizer for Jira to audit and configure, clean up, and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip-top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. Anyways, that's it for this video. That's essentially how you add statuses to our Jira work management. Hopefully those tips and tricks will give you a good guidance for how you should be thinking about this. And hopefully this video was clear enough. If it was and you found it valuable, make sure you smash that like button. And if you made it this far and you haven't smashed the subscribe button, now's your chance to hit that subscribe button. And finally, don't forget to check out the links down below. I got my paid courses. I got my merch and most importantly i have links to my sponsors that make these videos possible so go show them some love try out their apps that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next one so fight and fight.